How many people does it take to drive a driverless car? 5. A safety driver behind the wheel, an operator to program the route, and 3 engineers monitoring it in another car behind. It is, to be fair, barely even a prototype. The autonomous car unveiled in Milton Keynes last week is Bleeding Edge Engineering, Britain's entry in a global race to get the first driverless car on the road. The converted Range Rover Sport can steer itself, speed up and slow down, stop at red lights and move off when they turn green. It can even cope with roundabouts, a fundamental skill in Milton Keynes. The five operators are there to examine every nuance of the car's reaction to the ever-changing road conditions, cyclists, pedestrians and other drivers, and the weather, to name a few. The public demonstration of the car by UK Auto Drive, a consortium led by engineering company Arab, supported by Jaguar Land Rover, Ford and Tata Motors, should have been a celebratory milestone for British motor manufacturing. Yet growing excitement about self-driving cars was shattered by the death of Elaine Hertzberg in Tempe, Arizona, last week. She was hit by an autonomous Uber that did not apparently detect the 49-year-old when she wheeled her bicycle across the road at night. It's dreadful, says Tim Armitage, the project director for UK Auto Drive. It's dreadful for the person involved, everyone involved. And it shows just how important it is to make sure that what we are demonstrating today is safe and that we don't oversell the technology. UK Auto Drive's engineering efforts are focused on safety, but that is not the only concern. The government has invested £250 million into several major research projects involving at least 1,000 people, Armitage estimates. By 2035 the Department for Transport expects the industry to be worth £50 billion to the economy, about a third of all UK manufacturing, although the current motor industry contributes about £58 billion. Still, there's a lot riding on the success of self-driving cars. The government strategy for getting there is all about research. By dangling substantial grants, it has managed to corral car companies, universities and other interests into working together, a contrast to the US, for example, where Uber, Google's Waymo and Toyota are entirely competitive. In the UK there are 15 government-sponsored projects led by four major consortiums like UK Auto Drive, which are coming at the problem from different angles. Predicting the behavior of other drivers, cyclists and pedestrians, understanding the needs of elderly or disabled drivers, and the challenges of motorways. All the research returns to the same theme, how to make roads safe while allowing people to travel where they need to. As with any technology, there are glitches. On the demonstration drive in Milton Keynes, we have a near miss when the car lurches forward at a junction in the car park. The safety driver, Jim O'Donoghue, saves us from an impending collision with a parked car by grabbing the wheel. Afterwards he's not quite sure if he realized the car was going wrong or if it warned him it couldn't cope. I've been driving it for several weeks, so I'm really tuned into it, he says, underlining the unconscious, near visceral familiarity that people have with technology they use regularly. Driver behavior and human-machine interaction are all important elements of the research. Being a passenger in this Range Rover is like being driven by a clumsy taxi driver. Acceleration feels aggressive, for the traffic lights, its foot to the floor until we hit 30 miles per hour. Braking starts rather later than I would like. Once up to speed, it drives extraordinarily close to the curb. The side senses can judge the distance much more precisely than a human. It all adds up to an unsettling experience that feels entirely unlike riding any other vehicle. But the car, it must be emphasized, is still being built, senses and controls are adjusted on a daily basis. These cars are the most eye-catching part of the research, with the aim to design a vehicle that can cope with any situation more safely than a human driver. The other, more immediate focus is on connected cars, using mobile phone technology to allow every vehicle on the road to talk to each other. Another demonstration shows how drivers in standard cars can be given information, such as whether cars in traffic are had a braking.